So a couple of years ago, I produced a video called The Property Tax Return, 17 Tips You Should Know. And it's a long video. So what I want to do is produce a shorter video to help you save tax on your property ta tax returns. So let's go check out this one tip that I think is gonna be useful for you. Repairs is such a easy cost to get some tax advantages on. I'm going to talk to you about a buy. So the BMV stands for below market value. So you might buy a property for an old couple that is going to a care home, as an example. Now, you know full well that they've got salmon or green decor throughout the property. And they've got, the you know, the, the old rickety wooden finished kitchen. They have got the green or the salmon, salmon colored uh, bathroom suites god awful um, but they've got them there and you know for a while you are going to replace those items now you might negotiate the price down because you're saying to them well the house price is two hundred thousand pounds but clearly there is a lot of work that needs to be done in the house i estimate it on my experience it's going to cost me fifteen thousand pounds that fifteen thousand pounds really has got to come off the purchase price so let's do a deal for hundred eighty five thousand a great way to do it um, by the way if you do that kind of negotiation then you could also save stamp duty line tax as well so another good reason to do some negotiation uh, but the reason why i mention this is if you are then replacing that kitchen and replacing that bathroom that will be a legitimate replacement cost and as a result of that you can get tax relief on that fifteen thousand pounds as an example i gave you earlier so and those losses by the way can be then carried forward which i'm going to talk about later on um, for indefinite until they've been used up. So why not um, do that? Now, the bit on the bottom, interesting enough, came up from a recent tax call I've had with someone where I said, well, stick all these repair costs against your tax return to pay less tax. And there has to be a decision here because you may want to use your tax return in the form of evidence to lenders to say, hey, I'm mortgageable, give me a mortgage. But if you are demonstrating constantly that you're tax efficient, like I was, uh, for eight years, I paid no property tax. Now, I was gloating on that for a long period of time until I needed a mortgage to buy a house. And I couldn't do it. I had to wait two years to get a home mortgage on a property that I really wanted because I was too tax efficient. So you do need to weigh up. This could apply not just to home mortgages, but it could also apply for buy to let mortgages going forwards as well. If mortgage lenders are looking at you as a business and you're making losses all the time, then they may not take you that seriously and push up the interest rates or even worse still, not lend to you at all. So do be a bit careful about being tax efficient against getting a mortgage. Loan interest and other finance costs. So this is about putting the right amount of mortgage interest costs correctly in your tax return. The thing about this is that people will say, well, this is zero. Accountants may be at zero, but you need to really look at, well, do I have some furnished holiday lets in here? Do I have some commercial properties? Well, some of those costs for, sorry, mortgage interest costs for commercial properties and indeed furnished holiday lets would be allowed. So you can put those costs against your tax return. You can get the full tax relief on those costs. So please do make sure that you don't just put things in a spreadsheet and go, right, yeah, it's all my property income, and you've got mixed portfolio, because you could be missing out on the opportunities to get that tax relief. So what I would do personally is segment your property, property by property on a column by column basis on your spreadsheet. Make sure that it's identifiable to say, does section 24 affect this property? If it does, then fine. Don't claim the tax relief in this box on your tax return. If it do, if you've got commercial properties, furnished holiday lets, make sure you put that mortgage interest cost against your uh, tax return and save tax. Too little ta uh, too little cost in tax return equals too much tax, and that's what we're trying to avoid. So make sure that you really are clear about the property, the type of property and indeed with the mortgage interest cost that you can or cannot offset. Other capital allowances. Now, there are capital allowances on um, commercial buildings and indeed furnished LED lets. Now, residential properties, you can't really get capital allowances on. Used to, but not so much now. But 
Photo shot of the lets and commercial properties, you can still get capital allowances. You may also have furniture and office, purpose-built office in your home and the furniture that you've purchased for your business could well be claimed against your tax return. So again, if you've got these kind of furniture holiday lets, make sure you use a company like Six Ford, who are capital allowances specialists. They will come out, do a survey on your property, identify the capital allowances, and then say, put this against your tax return. They will be able to identify far more capital allowances than you can. And indeed, I would argue far more than your accountant. And the reason for that is because they will do a survey and look at things that you cannot see. So you can easily see in your furniture already let, the furniture, the TV stand, the, uh, the, the dining suite, the beds, that kind of furniture. You can see that. But what Six Forward, which is a capital allowances specialist, what they could do is look beyond the walls. Mm, X-ray vision. So now they can use their X-ray vision to go through the walls and see pipes. They've got the pipes for the water, taken through the systems. You've got the gas pipes, and you've also got wiring for electrics. They can claim those on the capital allowances claim, which means more cost, less tax. Brilliant. How many people do that? Hmm, it'd be interesting. Maybe drop a comment if you claim capital allowances and it's able to you to save tax, just so you can provide other people with your insights. Cost of replacing domestic items. Again here, we may have a scenario whereby you have got a property, uh, talks about um, domestic items. You might have furniture that you've bought from uh, someone and you've got some, uh, I don't know, a dining table that the old couple have left behind in the previous example. They might have left the beds because they only need two beds and they've got, they had three. Would you mind skipping that for me? Yeah, you're a nice person, you'll do that. If you've got HMO, for instance, you might replace that bed because who wants to sleep in that? And then you get a new bed, uh, you've got a new bed, and that means that it's a replacement item. So that can be claimed on your tax return. Indeed, you may have um, fridges and freezers that have been left in that property. But again, if you replace those items, skip the first ones, then those items can also be claimed against. So make sure you do that. Not only that, but uh, did you know, there's a question for you here, uh, did you know that the stamp duty land tax is based on the bricks and mortar, not the contents of the house? So if you turn the house upside down and give it a good old shake, you would be a strong person and you should be on a show. Um, but aside from that show, uh, if you tilt a house upside down, a furniture comes down like that, then those items are called chattels and you do not pay stamp duty land tax on chattels. So you can turn your house upside down, anything that goes to the floor, place a value by going around with the seller and say, well, how much are those curtains when you bought them? Value. How much were those curtains? Value. Furniture. Value. And at the end, you will come up with a value, let's say £3,000. You go to your solicitor and they go to their solicitor and say, well, we're doing the house for, I don't know, £200,000, less the furniture, £3,000. You've now just saved yourself 3% SDLT higher rate on that £3,000 because they are chattels. You'd also save on stamp duty land tax banded rate. All right, so I hope that one property tax return tip can help you save money. But what about the other tax tips, the 16 that we have mentioned in the other long video? Are you going to watch that? Well, I think that's a great idea. So there is a link in the video description box below, but I'll also be putting it just above my head right now.